Hello and welcome to Free Training Tuesday. This is Julie Barkas, workplace transformationalist and best-selling author of Childcare Business Success. It's a pleasure to be here to, with you tonight. I'm coming to you live from my living room. So it's a little bit of a different setting and my cat is actually going crazy around me with a new feather toy. So she may uh, pop into this video from time to time. So I'm here in my living room. I thought it would be really fun to do a fireside chat and a fireside training topic. And the topic that came to me tonight was all about workplace gossip. And years and years and years ago, I actually wrote a whole gossip program, Break the Gossip Chain, complete with audios that you can tune into. Um, and maybe we'll bring that back out someday. But there's some critical things in here that I'd like to share with you this evening. And I'm just going to go for about maybe 20 minutes because, of course, tonight's Tuesday. It's also dancing night for me. So if you're here, please say hello. And I know last time I did this, for some reason, I didn't see comments. So hopefully I'll see your comments this time. Uh, but I'll try to make this as interactive as possible, and I do want to entertain your questions. So I have two screens open just in case I can't see them right here in my live feed box. I'll hop on over to the other screen where I will peek at your questions. So make sure whether you're listening to the live broadcast of this or the replay that you say hello. And I love when you say hello, at least when I first start, because then I know that you can hear me. And um, I've only had it happen a couple times where I started talking for, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes, and uh, you couldn't hear me. <laughs> so I just want to make sure that you can hear me okay, and then I'm coming to you loud and clear. So if you're on live with me, go ahead and say hello. Let me know where you're tuning in from, and I'm just going to check over on my other screen to see what's going on and to make sure I'm showing up over here. But um, let's see. So you have to pardon me what I'm doing over here. Let's see. Okay, so right now I don't see the video. Here, bear with me for a second. I'm just gonna refresh this. And see if I could see anybody here. Okay. Maybe, oh, yep, there I am. All right. So if you're here, go ahead and say hello if you're tuning in. So I was just trying to make sure that I could find <laughs> where the video was. But I'm hoping that we get some uh, people tuning into the live stream tonight. Uh, and like I said, I'm just going to go for about 20 minutes. So if you're here, say hello, give this video a like, give it a love. And uh, your participation always encourages me to share more. So tonight I just wanted to chat again about workplace gossip and there's a couple basic questions that I want to answer for you tonight about the topic. How do you like the fire we've got going? Is that awesome? And uh, I'll show you around just a little bit before I get started. So this is my part of my living room you'll see and I'll try to bring you into my house so that you could see other parts of it. But there's my front door, so if you're coming over to visit, that's where you'd be coming in through. <laughs> and uh, this is my new place, so I'm looking out uh, what's directly in front of me is my pond where the ducks and geese have been going at it since very early this morning. I discovered that uh, the ducks and geese like to get up like at around 6 o'clock and start making some noise. Mandy, yes, I'm seeing comments. Okay, perfect. How are you, Mandy? We're talking about gossip. Is that a good topic? I haven't gotten into it yet. I've just been rambling on, waiting for some folks to hop on and join us, showing you my living room and the fire behind me. And, and this isn't like Photoshopped or a fake screen. This is my living room in my house. Um, and I just thought it would be fun instead of my office, which is downstairs the house, without much furniture in it, just to come on up here into my living room and have a fireside chat about gossip. So it's good to have you here, Mindy. And if you're tuning in, please say hello. Give this video a like, give it a heart, and that's the way that we benefit other people with this video is when uh, they see your hearts and your likes, it puts it into their stream so that they can come back and view it more. And I will also respond to your comments after I wrap up the live stream or maybe later when I come back from dancing. I'll respond. Do you love the fireplace? Wait, wait, wait. There we go. Colleen in, and I've actually got, you never know which way to go here. Oh, I've got a little water fountain and a candle thing. <laughs> so 
I've tried to uh, be my own interior decorator, so, but uh, I try, and one of the things I love to create for myself is experiences, and we'll talk about that on future videos, but I love to sound, surround myself with beauty and opulence because that's what really inspires me, and then I love to bring people into my home so that I could create that experience, and in my living room, one thing you'll notice is there is no TV, so it's basically me, the fireplace, some books, uh, different things like that. So, all right. So we're going to dive in. We're going to talk about workplace gossip. And as you tune in and you like the topic, I'll be asking for a little bit of interaction. I'm not going to go, like I said, too long tonight, but I'm waiting for some folks to hop on and hopefully we'll have some good conversation. If there are questions that you have about gossip, please put them in the comment section. And even if you missed the live broadcast of this, I will come back, read your comments, and answer your questions. That's your benefit for being here, part of our child care business success community. All right, so one thing that leaders always want to know from me is why is it so hard to stop gossip? And I want to let you know that gossip is something that people do to fit in. And especially women, we have a deep need to fit in. So when they come into a gossipy organization, even if during the interview process you feel you've weeded out the gossipers and they make a commitment and sign their life away, that they're not going to gossip, but yet then they come into your workplace and gossip, it's because they have this tremendous need to fit in. And if the culture is one of gossip, it's easier to fit into that culture than to break away from it and stand on your own. And we find that a lot of our teachers and some of our directors, and you might say, oh yeah, that's me, have lower self-confidence in this industry. So we can be totally confident when it comes to dealing with the kiddos, but when it comes to dealing with parents or other staff members or having those crucial confrontations, we're a little bit shaky. Hey, Kristen, nice to see you here. We're talking about gossip. I hope you find that that benefits you. So this is one of the biggest reasons that gossip happens is because we've got a big need to fit in. And some people think that they could fool new staff by saying, oh no, we don't gossip and we do, don't do this and it's against our ethical code, but then you've got a very gossipy team and you sit there, sit there scratching your head saying, okay, I told this person we don't gossip here, I laid out the protocol, why are they doing it? And like I said, it is a big need, especially for women, to fit in. And if the culture is gossipy, that's what's going to happen because it's really tough to be that standalone person and break away from it. It just really, really is. The other big reason that people gossip is, um, well, there's actually several reasons. Which ones do I give you? <laughs> but another big reason as to why team members gossip Number one is because they have the need to fit in. Number two is because it's habitual. It is a habit. And for those of you who have tried to quit smoking, tried to quit drinking soda pop, tried to eat healthier, try to get to the gym as often as you think you should, you know how tough old habits can be to break. So for a lot of people, especially if they've been gossiping in the workplace for a long, long time, they come just to incorporate it as a habit. And sometimes they don't even know they're doing it, kind of like sarcasm. It just comes out. You don't even know that the words that are coming out of your mouth and how hurtful they are. So it's habitual, and people have the need to fit in. And those are two of the biggest reasons as to why people gossip. So even if we just look at these two reasons, habitual, need to fit in, then what's missing and what can we do to help staff stop gossiping? Well, I'll tell you another th reason. I wanna give you one more thing here because there's like several reasons as to why they gossip. But another reason, and I've seen this in childcare programs all the time when I go in and consult, is that they don't know what gossip is. Imagine that, right? So how do you define gossip? And it's really important that you have a definition in place of workplace gossip that you can share with your staff. Now in my campus, when I teach about workplace gossip, I teach that workplace gossip is passing along information that's not relevant to anyone doing their job effectively. 
And we use that definition as a boundary to break out of the gossip chain, or at least to have the awareness, yes, I'm gossiping, no, I'm not gossiping, yes, I am gossiping, no, I'm not gossiping. Because a lot of people go around without that awareness, and if we don't have awareness, this is key, this is gold, ready? If you don't have awareness about a behavior, whether your behavior is destructive or constructive, you cannot change it. And you might be saying, Julie, they should know if what they're doing is gossip because it's something that's negative, it's something that's hurtful. But like I said, our definition of gossip is passing along information that's not relevant to anyone doing their job effectively. And you could come up with your own definition, or if you like mine, please use Julie's definition of workplace gossip. Uh, but if we don't have this in place, people can't say, hmm, am I gossiping? Am I not gossiping? Because when we look and study the history of gossip, in the olden days, a gossip was considered somebody in the town who passed along critical information to other people. So they didn't have telephones, they didn't have texting, they didn't have computers, so they relied on the town gossip to get the information. So in the olden days, a gossip was a really good person who you got information from. And then as information became available via radio, television, phones, whatever it might be, uh, the person who was gossiping then became the destructive person who was passing along hurtful information. Can gossip hurt? Yes. Can it just be irrelevant to you and to you doing your job? Yes. So look at gossip and say, hmm, how do we define it? So those are three reasons that uh, people participate in workplace gossip. They don't know what it is, they have a strong need to fit in, and it's habitual. And habits are hard to break. How are you liking this information? Good? If you're liking it, give me an, oh yeah, Julie, this is fantastic. And I'm gonna take a little sip of some water here. Because although we're fireside and my back's to the fire, it still gets a little warm. <laughs> so, so it is heating up a little bit over here. But this, so is the topic of gossip. It's really hot, right? And we're always looking for ways. And this is still one of the biggest challenges, not just in childcare, but in many industries, especially, you know, I talked to my girlfriend who's the director of nursing and they've got gossip. And she's always asking me, you know, when we're at get togethers, how do I deal with this and how do I deal with that? So it's really important. How do we help our team to stop? Well, in order to break a habit, one of the things that we have to do is help them build skills. They have to start building skills. And you have to start evaluating yourself and saying, hmm, what skills do I need to build? And uh, it's something very powerful that you model for your staff. So what skills do I need to build? Here are some of the top skills that we need to build in our organization so that we can indeed eliminate workplace gossip. Are you ready? Are you ready for these? Got your pen and paper ready? Say yes, Julie. Yes, oh yes. See, I thrive on interaction, so I encourage it because it keeps me going. I know you're tuning in. I know you're getting into the content, and that excites me. Well, that gossip kind of excites me anyways, <laughs> but it really does. It really does. So here are the things, here are the, the skills that your team members and you need to build to break the gossip chain. Kelly, nice to have you here. Mandy, you know me, give it to me, Julie, absolutely. Is my video coming through clear? I'm on my laptop tonight with my camera, so I hope we're good. All right, so these are the skills that your team members, and if you've got questions, list them below. Like I said, this is gonna be a shorter training because I'm off to the dance floor. Yeah, yeah. I think there are some boys who are waiting for a dance. <laughs> um, all right, so here are the skills that you need to build and that your team needs to build. Ready? Conflict resolution. Conflict resolution. Does your team, does your organization, does your program have a conflict resolution system in place? And I often ask when I speak, do you have a CRS? And I remember one director saying, yes, I've got CRS, I can't remember shit. And I was like, well, that's not 
quite what I meant by CRS. CRS is your conflict resolution system, and we all need to make sure that we've got one in place so that conflicts can be resolved. I know in NAEYC's Ethical Code of Conduct, it states that if you have a problem with somebody, you go and you work it out directly. I guarantee you, and you may have even witnessed this in your own child care program, that is not happening as often as it could. And it's probably even very rarely happening because people don't have the next skill set that we need to help them build. Ready for this one? So conflict resolution is one skill set. Another skill set is self-confidence, self-confidence. So they need to continuously build their skills in confidence. Ah, yes. And these are your soft skills. So these skills aren't necessarily the easiest skills to build. You can't just go necessarily send them to a class. But what you can do, so here's a big secret for you. What you can do is challenge your team to get out of their comfort zone. Challenge your team to get out of their comfort zone. And I'll give you an example. One time I was in facilitating a staff meeting, and this happens probably a lot, <laughs> um, even recently in Florida with the directors. But we have staff members who are lower in confidence and I'll have owners and directors come up to me and say, Julie, this team member is not so confident, so maybe you could give them an option where they don't have to participate. And I'm like, um, yeah, no, <laughs> I'm not here to be liked. <laughs> I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to challenge people to get out of their comfort zones. So I challenge you to do the same thing. As a leader, your role is to coach your team. And this means that sometimes you won't be liked. This means that at times you will be pushing and you will be challenging your team. But in the long run, they're going to grow. And so in order to help your team grow, you've got to be asking yourself, what am I doing myself to challenge me to get out of my, my uh, comfort zone? Renee, Renee is a walking example, right, Renee? You could let everybody know about it. I'm so thrilled that you're here. I think about you often. Um, <laughs> but, you know, but in Florida, you know, we had directors, and Renee, you could tell stories if you want to, but uh, where it's like, don't call on me. I'm not going to say anything. I'm kind of the person who likes to sit in the corner. And I get that all the time. But I don't adhere to it. But what I do do is help people gradually build their confidence during our time together. So maybe they're speaking solo uh, by day number three, with, which is what happened in Florida, is that we have people who weren't going to talk. Then they got into participating. And then by day three, they made their own little private presentation. So it does happen. But you've got to hold your team accountable for building and increasing their confidence so that you can grow as a team. Make sense? Okay. Now, the next skill that you need to build in order to eliminate gossip is listening skills. Listening skills. And one of the biggest things I would work on is doing activities and exercises that involve people looking in each other's eyes and giving each other eye contact. Because when you look into somebody's eyes, and I practice this all the time, but when you look into somebody's eyes, it is really hard not to really listen to what they're saying. So you just take your focus and intention. And as leaders, I really encourage you to practice this. <laughs> yes, Renee, we did. Renee and Renee is um, just a walking testimony of courage. And I always admire the people who come into programs where their confidence is low, and then by the end, they're doing solo. My heart just soars seeing that in action. So kudos, Renee, and kudos for sharing that here. So one of the last skills that I'll share with you that they really need to build is the listening and getting them not to be thinking about what they're gonna say and not to be afraid of the silence, but to really listen to each other and they could reflect each other's thoughts and what they're hearing. And it's not that they have to fix or take care of that person's feelings, but we do wanna practice listening. So listening, self-confidence, and conflict resolution are the three top skills that we need to build so that our team members can break out of the habitualness. Is that a word, habitualness? <laughs> to break out of the habit of gossiping. Now, when I come on site and I do team trainings, we talk a lot 
about what do we do instead of gossiping. So there's different things, and people really have to understand that even if they merely listen to the gossip, they're a part of the gossip. And there have been people in organizations who got fired just for listening to the gossip. So part of it is to get yourself out of the situation as quickly and effectively as you can uh, by breaking out and saying, okay, I can't be a part of this conversation. But we also have to recognize from the very top of the organization down, what is gossip and what is not gossip? These are a few things to get you started. The last thing I wanna share with you uh, let me see what I wrote here in the description. Oh yeah, you know, one thing too that uh, leaders are doing wrong. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll adjust these two things that I wrote here about. Uh, one of the things that leaders are doing wrong when it comes to eliminating workplace gossip is really disempowering staff to where we're jumping in and we're fixing all problems for them. We really have to have methodologies and systems in place so that our staff can be thinking and full functioning and empowered even when we're not there. And I once heard somebody say, and I was listening to this very carefully because I thought it was so critically important, and I wanna share it with you, is that when you tr tr um, uh, train your staff, and we train everybody how to treat us, but when you train your staff to be dependent on you, you are also enabling your staff to be angry. And anger is one of the root causes, one of them, of workplace gossip. And I thought this was very pivotal, is that when you train people to be dependent upon you, you're also enabling them to be angry. And that is a huge golden nugget. So I would take that, I would write it down, uh, and really pay attention to that. Because if you have angry staff, or staff who spread rumors, think about am I empowering them or am I enabling them to be dependent upon me. And you know, if you think about this, of course, because then they're being victimized. And if you can't solve all of their issues personally and professionally, then they're victimized by you, and you're the bad person in the scenario, and they're just enabled, enabled waiting for you to solve the next thing for them. So empowerment is much different. Empowerment looks like when somebody comes to you with a problem or a question or a concern, is that you say to them, well, what three solutions would you recommend? You say to them, what would you like to have happen that's not currently happening? How can you take responsibility for handling that one thing? What can you implement? So you really pull them back to their empowered shoes. And I always say, let your brilliance be reflected in the questions that you ask, not in the answers that you give. And this is super important. Write it down and write it down big. But let, the, let your own brilliance be reflected in the questions that you ask, not in the answers that you give. Super important. So you want to hear your brilliance coming out of your team members' mouths as if it's their own ideas. Imagine that. Imagine where you could just go, Yes, they got it, they got it, all right? So that's one thing, so that's what we have to stop doing is really enabling team members. We've gotta switch it over to empowerment. The last thing I wanna share with you on this training is what is your staff missing that will help them develop the motivation to want to make change happen? Anybody have any guesses for this one? Anyone? Okay, so what is your staff missing? When it comes to workplace gossip, they have to become super aware that when they gossip, it impacts their own professional reputation. And when their own professional reputation is impacted, they never know who they're going to meet, who might hire them for a future position. Maybe it's a parent that they'll go to work for their corporation someday. You never know. But people form opinions in their mind thinking, hmm, how you're communicating to me is how you're gonna communicate to everybody. So staff are really missing the boat, and we have to really reiterate with this, this with them is that their own professional reputation is online when they choose destructive modes of communicating. And the same is true for us. When we vent to one staff member about another staff member, people feel that energy, people feel that vibe. So this is really important to hone in on when it comes to creating a gossip-free environment. 
the question I'm asked all the time is, Julie, can gossip really be eliminated? My answer is absolutely yes. One of the main reasons gossip persists in the workplace and gossip does not get eliminated is because people do not have the belief or the mindset that it is possible. But <laughs> welcome to my land. Welcome to my world where I live in the world of possibilities. And I have worked in, been managed under many organizations where gossip was not an issue. And I always study these organizations to say, hmm, why is gossip going on over here, but it's not going on over here? And the secrets are some of the secrets I've been sharing with you in this live free Tuesday training on workplace gossip. So I hope you're getting some good stuff because I'm going to wrap up very soon. So if you have any comments for me, any questions, now's a great time to go ahead and post those. If you've loved this, love coming into my living room tonight, maybe sometime we'll go waterfront, um, bring the camera out there. But if you've loved this, please give this video a heart, give it a like so that others will see it show up in their streams and so that we can keep spreading the word. And you know, part of the reason that I do what I do is because I know there are so many people who are managing staff who are in pain. Um, there's a lot going on. They don't know how to uh, stop gossip, how to make things better in their workplace. And I really believe that God has granted me with some incredible wisdom on the topic and through my own research as well. And that's what my mission is, is to really propel you out of the pain so that you can make staff motivation an incredibly joyous journey, which it could be. There's a fallacy of, of leadership. I know when I took first my first leadership position, it was like I loved what I was doing. And my boss was like, well, how would you like to love what you're doing more, but now through other people? And I'm like, oh, set up, <laughs> set up. I was set up because that's not the way it is. You know, people are coming in. I don't have a clue what they're doing. I don't know how to talk to them so that they'll uh, do things differently. I don't know how to inspire change within them. So what I'm sharing with you is a huge part, like I said, of the wisdom that God has granted me with. And I really believe that it's a gift from God with what I'm able to share and do in teams that I work with. And also just the path that I've taken and the leaders I've worked for where I've excelled, the leaders where I've worked for where I didn't excel, the people who I've tried to manage and have managed them unsuccessfully to where I was no longer their manager because I couldn't figure out the equation. So I figured we really need to have some solid concrete solutions in place for staff motivation. And this isn't going to be for everybody because some people want the quick fix. Some people want the band-aid. Some people want to say, here are some donuts, be happy for the next two hours. Here's a gift, be happy for the next eight hours. But my approach is different because I want to help you get to the heart of the issues that you're dealing with so that you can make some big profound changes happen. Sound good? All right. I'm going to wrap this puppy up because the dance floor is calling me. Time to go put some comfy clothes on or something. Turn my fireplace off. You guys like the fire? You like the ambiance? Uh, and I'll, I'll uh, continue to do more videos throughout my house so that you can see uh, my decorating flair and different parts of the house. And maybe someday, who knows, you'll be a house guest here as we do do programs uh, where I live too. So that's pretty cool. I get excited about that. All right, was this helpful for you? If it was, give me an oh yeah, or leave me a question or a comment. And even if you're tuning into the replay, please leave me your question or comment as well. And I've got a lot more to share on workplace gossip. And like I said, I wrote a whole like 100 page leader's guide. It's not currently on the market, but we did a lot to really eradicate gossip. And um, you know, maybe someday we'll re-release that, but I do incorporate it with everything that I teach because gossip, just like people complaining about money, uh, just like us not being able to find the right staff, it's all symptomatic. It's all symptomatic of other things that are not happening or are happening in your workplace. So I hope you'll really take my approach and look deeply at the root cause of the issues that you're facing so you get long-lasting, permanent change, not just another quick fix. You're welcome, Renee. You're welcome, Kristen. So good to be here with you. And if you're looking for more, you'd like more Julie, more time with me, 
I encourage you. We've got a fantastic event coming up next week. Uh, it's the Create Your Dream Team Experience. If you're not coming to that, I encourage you to come to that event in Vegas. It's the third. It's next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and it is going to be absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to spend time with people who are flying in from all over the place. And the cool thing with Vegas, hop on a last-minute flight, get a good rate, and um, I'll see you out there. All right, and I will come back and read comments. So I think that's it. I'm going to wrap up for tonight. I hope you've enjoyed this training. I'm Julie Bartkus, Workplace Transformationalist and best-selling author of Child Care Business Success. And I look forward to helping you create your positive, productive, and profitable child care program. I'll see you real soon. Bye.